Old Brooklyn Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recover of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed old brooklyn christian church Amen. well i'd like to welcome everyone to old brooklyn christian church today's message is called stay in your jurisdiction amen how many of you know that God has a jurisdiction for each and every one of us that we need to stay in? And when we get outside of that jurisdiction, there are consequences. Amen? Some of those consequences are direct, directly delivered by the hands of God. The Bible says, despise not the chastening of the Lord, that he chastens every son that he receives. Amen? There is a chastening that comes from the Lord. I've experienced it. Yeah. Amen. How I many you know when God chastens you, it, it stays with you? Amen. I remember when a man, a principal, chastened me from uh, uh, elementary school. To this day, I remember that spanking. I remember the paddle. I remember the color. I remember the duct tape on it, the holes of the paddle. I remember the, the principal's name that uh, gave me the paddle. But I can't tell you anything that I learned in the school. I don't know what they taught in math class, science class, English class, gym class. Uh, uh, home economics. I can't tell you anything that any of the teachers ever taught me at all. My entire elementary school I, is a blur to me, right? But I'm talking about Einstein, gifted, phenomenal, right? Photographic memory when it comes to that spanking. I could tell you in exclusive detail what it was like when that principal spank me amen how many of you know when the lord chastens you or punishes you how many of you know you remember that too amen. right so sometimes we leave the jurisdiction of god the lord chastens us out of love amen right out of love because he wants us to get back where we should be amen. how many of you know sometimes we leave god's jurisdiction we allow the devil to attack us amen amen how many know that this is a badge of cleveland ohio Right? That I got off of the internet. Googled it. And how many of you know that this badge holds a lot of weight? Yeah. Right? If you flash a badge and you're not uh, a, a false impersonation of a police officer, but you actually receive the badge from the police department, if you have that badge, it gives you jurisdiction. But that jurisdiction is not unlimited jurisdiction that jurisdiction is strictly exclusively for cleveland so if you stay within that jurisdiction and you're a police officer you're allowed to legally pull people over you can illegally arrest people if they're breaking the law you have all types of power now and it doesn't matter whether the person that you're dealing with as a police officer from cleveland it doesn't matter whether the person's uh, stronger than you smarter than you richer than you more powerful than you he could be seven foot tall solid muscle right and you still have more power and authority over him because you have a badge did i lose anybody <laughs> amen everyone with me still Amen. Now check this out. As much power as that is, now maybe you have someone that wants to resist arrest, right? Because they're intoxicated and they're not feeling a night in the can, right? They don't want to go to jail. So they're going to resist the arrest of that police officer. Doesn't matter. You hit that little button on the, uh, the walkie-talkie, the CB, and all of a sudden now you call for backup, that person who's way more stronger than you, way more uh, muscular, more intelligent, right? Might even out outgun you. Doesn't matter. You call for backup, then you have unlimited backup coming from different cities to embrace your jurisdiction, right? If that don't work, they call for the SWAT team. The SWAT team comes out. If that don't work, they just go up the chain of command until finally they arrest the person that needs to be arrested. Amen? It's almost unlimited power in the natural. Right? Impressive. But go ahead and take that Cleveland, Ohio 
police badge that's so impressive and go ahead and wave it in Iraq <laughs> and see how far that gets you Nowhere. with the Muslims or the Muslims, however you want to say it. You go ahead and wave that powerful Cleveland badge in Iraq and they might arrest you because you're from Cleveland, Ohio, because they don't like America, right? Go to North Korea or North, North Korea, right, with Kim and start wa waving that Cleveland Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio badge. Doesn't matter what number it's on there, right? And show it to Mr. Kim, President Kim, and see what he thinks about it. He might put you in a camp, <laughs> right? So our jurisdiction, no matter how powerful it is, when you go outside of it, you lose all power. And consequences can rain down on you. Amen? Well, that's a, a simple example that everyone that was actually trying to pay attention to the voice and the words coming out of my mouth can easily understand. Unless you don't want to be here and your mind's out in Florida and you're thinking about a hammock and a drink and a cold drink. But if that wasn't you, you could easily understand that. God speaks to us in an easy way where all of us could understand it. Amen. Amen. And just like that police officer who traveled to Iraq and thought he was special, waving it doesn't hold no weight. As Christians, we have a jurisdiction given by God. Amen. Amen. We have an assigned place where God designed us to be. And if we stay within that jurisdiction of God, we become powerful in God. Amen. Let the church say, Amen. what is jurisdiction? Jurisdiction means the right, the power, or authority to administer justice. Let the church say, hallelujah. We like all those things. Amen. Talk to me about power. I like power. Talk to me about the right to administer justice. I love that. Amen. We like that part. And it says control a right to exercise authority. Don't I feel special? <laughs> However, when it comes to number three, that's when we start to hold back. It says the limits. Pastor, don't put no limits on me. I like the power part. I like the exercise justice part. But how many of you know that that comes with limits? It comes with territory. Within authority may be exercised. Amen? The more we stay within the limits of our jurisdiction, the more powerful we are. Amen? Someone said, I don't like that. <laughs> Our jurisdiction only works when we obey God's word. Amen? As we apply God's word to our work, to our life, we apply it. That's where our jurisdiction remains. That's where our authority remains. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me. And he said, I've given you authority through the Holy Spirit to trample on demons. Amen? Amen. Our jurisdiction only works when we obey God's word. Amen. In Exodus chapter 16, verses 16, the Bible says, this is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer, someone said, what's omer? That's just a measurement, okay? We can replace that word with cup. It's just, a, and I don't know whether omer is a cup or not. I'm not a mathematical equation genius. I'm simply sharing the word of God that it is some type of a measurement is what God is talking about. Take an omer or a measurement for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told, right? And it says, some gathered much, some little. And they measured each by their omer. And the one who gathered much did not have too much. And the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone gathered as much as they needed. So in other words, Moses was the man of God and he was speaking the word of God to the people of God. And when they heard the word of God and obeyed the word of God and applied it to their life, they prospered. Amen. 
Amen. It said the one that had too much didn't have too much. The one that had too little didn't have too... The one that gathered little didn't have... They had just what they needed. And I learned in this life that when I apply the Word of God in my life, that God blesses me because of that. He prospers me in different areas of my life. Amen. I found out that you can go farther in the Word of God, obeying God, than you can trying to do things your own way outside of the Word of God. Now, you have to experience that for your own self to appreciate it. Amen? Amen? Amen. And these people applied it, they experienced it, and they appreciate it. Now, that might not sound no, like no big deal. We could just go to McDonald's, we can apply our food stamp card, we can uh, go to the bank and use our credit card, and we can get food easy. Right? These people didn't have those accessories. They were out in the wilderness. desert. And the wilderness. And no matter how hard and unlikely their life got to be able to receive food, God still made a way. Amen. <laughs> Our jurisdiction only works in the timing of God. Amen? So, in other words, God could tell you to do something... But that doesn't mean that you have unlimited amount of time to do it. God will say, hey, I want you to do this. Hey, I want you to do that. Well, I'll tell you what, God has a window of opportunity for everything that he tells us to do. If we don't take advantage of that window opportunity, eventually that door will shut. How many of you know I will stand here, Lord willing, on Thursdays and Sundays and I will preach the word of God? Right? You have a window of opportunity to be able to catch the Word of God. If you come Saturday, I'm not mad at you, but the Word of God will not be here. Amen? So there's a window of opportunity. The doors will be cl closed. You can knock all you want. No one's mad at you, but no one will be there to open the door. And God is the same way. He will give us a window of opportunity to do certain things. If we don't take advantage of it, then we can lose on that opportunity. How many of you know a police officer may have been assigned a badge and a gun, right, for maybe 30 years? But how many of you know there comes a time where he may not be qualified due to physical conditions to be able to sustain his badge and gun? He has to maintain a certain physical standard to be able to be a police officer. you got to be able to get out of bed. you got to be able to get in the car. You've got to be able to put your belt on. You, there's certain basic standards that you have to do. And I'm not trying to minimize the police officers. Don't think I, I love you guys. I appreciate you. I'm glad I don't have to do what you do. But there comes a time where they're going to retire. And that badge and gun is no longer valid when they're retired. They have a certain time allowed by God to exercise their jurisdiction. Amen? Amen? Look at uh, the same scripture. I'm on the same direction. In Exodus chapter uh, 16, verses 19, the same book, same chapter. Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. So now Moses gave them a little bit more instructions, and they had to obey it in order to continue to prosper. But it says, however, some of them paid no attention to Moses. Amen. How many know some people go to church and they pay no attention to pastor? They don't listen to what he's saying, what he's preaching. It doesn't matter. They heard it, but they don't pay attention to it. They don't want to apply it. Amen. Amen. Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow the news. Christ, he said. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. Now here becomes the difference between me and Moses. Amen. If you don't listen to the messages that I'm preaching, I love you. Not mad. I, I, I want to say it again. I'm not mad at you. 
You can do whatever you want to do. Amen. I don't dictate. I don't force anything. I'll simply proclaim and declare, but I'm not going to follow you around. Amen. I have a, 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 a job that I have to work on top of this. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to declare the word of God and trust like the scripture says that his word will not return back void. Amen. But I have learned if God is speaking through me, if not saying he is, but if he is, and you don't apply the message and the prophetic word that's coming out of the mouth that is pertaining to your life, and you don't apply it, and your life turns to maggots, and your life starts to smell, amen? amen. What can I do? Amen. amen? I can simply pray and repeat what God said to say. I don't want their life to smell, amen? amen. I want it to smell good. How many know maggots come when things start to rot? How many know when we disobey the word of God, we start to spiritually die and we start to rot? Amen? Amen. Embrace, well, (laughs) embrace who God put in our life to aid our spiritual walk. I can't tell you how many people have come to me and said, I had three families in one day said, Pastor, God told me to join this church. I mean, three families in one day, they said, and they said it with like, I wasn't confused. They weren't like insecure. They were like so fervent and passionate, right? Until I preached something that they didn't like. And so I preached the word of God and they didn't want to hear about certain things. And then a month later, two months later, three months later, all three families that told me, I didn't say, I never said, look, God sent you here. I don't know who sent you here. So they said God told them (laughs) to join the church. Three months later, they all said, oh, God told me to leave the church. (laughs) And God told me to join a church that's more spiritual. Well, God told me to find some Christians that are more spiritual to join the church. Amen. (laughs) No, I didn't say that. Amen. I didn't say anything. As a matter of fact, I just said, "Uh uh-huh. The same way I did when they said God told me to join the church. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. We'll see. So, When God does put someone in your life, you need to embrace them. Embrace them. Because I'm going to tell you, when God puts people in your life, it's not going to come like, it's going to come like winning the lottery. Amen. Bad example, but it's not going to come, it's going to be like finding a jewel. Like the Bible says, when a man finds a good wife, it's like finding rubies and jewels. When you find good Christian people in your life, you need to hold on to them. And not take for granted them. Embrace who God put in our life to aid our spiritual walk. I've learned that we can't walk this walk alone. Jesus said when two or three gather together in my name, there I am. We need, because of our flesh, this war that we have in our flesh, this spiritual battle that we have every day, the negative thoughts that come in our life, the demons that are out in this world, we need... Aid. Amen. Not necessarily Gatorade, but we need some type of spiritual aid. Amen. And this is what has been proven to work in my life. And I thank God for the aid that He sent me. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 13, verses 17. It says, obey them. So here we have jurisdiction, right? The message is stay in your jurisdiction, right? In order for us to be within the jurisdiction, we have to obey the people that God put in our life. If, again, if God put them in your life. But remember, God only put them in the life in your life as long as they agree with everything that you like. (laughs) Only God put them in your life as long as they only make you feel good. (laughs) (laughs) Obey them that have rule over you. Now, can I tell you, your spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit, loves this. Loves it. But if you're not in the Holy Spirit, you're not in the anointing, your flesh 
hates it. Hate your flesh can't stand to obey. And look at what it says. It says, submit. Our flesh never loves to submit. See, submit is not doing something that you agree with. By definition, it's impossible to submit to someone that you agree with because you naturally already agree with them. To submit to someone is to do something that you didn't plan on doing or you disagree with or you don't want to do. They disagreed with Moses when Moses sent him down to the Red Sea. They fought him tooth and nail. They didn't agree with him. They didn't understand what he was doing. They disagreed with him, but yet they submitted to him. And through that submission, they got saved, them and their family. Jesus said, I don't want to drink this cup, but nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Obey them that have rule over them. Submit to yourselves. I want to ride this horse. Amen. (laughs) For they watch for your souls. Now, who watches for your souls? The police officers? They just watch to make sure you obey the law. Who watches for your souls? Channel 8 News, your mom, your dad. The pastor watches for your soul. Amen. And it says, as they that must give an account. So pastors who watch over your souls, they have to give an account to God for everything and the way which they treat you and which they talk to you and which they address you and which they counsel you and which they advise you. God is going to hold them to a higher standard of accountability. That's according to scriptures. But look what it says. It says, Submit to them, obey them, for they watch over your souls. And it says that they may do it with joy. Now, who's supposed to have joy here? That's not what the scripture's saying. It's saying that the person who watches for your soul is supposed to have joy. Amen. You're going to be a Christian who either brings joy to the pastor or grief. You're either going to bless the pastor or you're going to stress the pastor. Now, most pastors will never be truthful with you and they will never tell you whether they're happy or sad, whether you're coming or going. But I'll talk to other pastors and they'll tell me there are some folks that go to church that they are grieved when they see certain people, but they'll never tell that. So are you living in a way where you're blessing the man of God or stressing? Amen. Look at what it says. That they may do it with joy and not with grief. Amen. When you walk out of church, does the pastor look like this? Or when you walk out of the church, does the pastor look like this? Amen. Let you be the judge. Amen. I'm not here to point fingers. I'm not here to point fingers, folks. <laughs> so, yeah, you invite someone to church. Man, I would love to go to church, but your pastor always looks like this. I'm sorry, pastor. I'm sorry. I would love to go to your church. I'm sorry, pastor. I wanted to go there, but every time I went, I gave it a try. I'm sorry, pastor. But your pastor always looks like this. I'm, sorry, pastor. I'm finding a new church where the pastor looks like this. Amen? And not with grief. Amen? It says that they may do it with joy. Joy. Amen? Now i got to just say, oh, you guys give me so much joy. (laughs) No. Amen? God, honestly, seriously, God gave a good group. Amen? I thank God for that. Amen? And this actually applies when I go down to the jail. Right? Sometimes I'll do a church service down in the jail and they're the best people in the world. They're hungry. They're shouting me down, talking about amen, praise the Lord. Right? And then there's other times where I have to ask them to leave. Right? And God's going to hold them accountable for the way that they treat the, treat the man of God as well. Amen? amen. amen. So it ain't just the pastor that's going to have to be accountable. We're going to have to be accountable the way that we treat the man of God. Amen? Amen. Temptation we did not need to face happens when we leave our jurisdiction. I want you to hear that again. 
temptation we did not need to face happens when we leave our jurisdiction. In other words, when you're going to a place where you had no business being in the first place, you get tempted more than you were able to bear because you were not being led by God. That's why the prayer, our Father says, lead us into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. Not lead us into temptation. Who's going to lead us into temptation? Satan. He's, God's going to tell you to go right. Satan is going to tell you to go left. Temptation we did not need to face happens when we leave our jurisdiction. A lot of folks feel like, oh, I can miss one day at church. I can't. I don't have to talk about for the betterment of society again. Amen. It's good for us to be in the house of God. So when you're here right here, you can be tempted. You can lust on my wife. You can lust on other people's wives. You can be thinking about smoking crack and drinking and doing all kinds of sinful things. You can do it. In the house of God. But not as easy if you were in the outside of the house of God. When you're under the presence of God, that temptation starts to disappear because the flesh is destroyed by the word of God. Amen. And the anointing of God, it takes away those thoughts that would normally be tempting you. Which is why it is imperative that we do not forsake the assembly of believers. Amen. As some are in the habit of doing. Temptation we did not need to face happens when we leave our jurisdiction. Well, pastor, where did you get this from? This scripture. It says in 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 25, it said, But he went out and stood before his master, and Elijah said unto him, Whence chemist thou Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went nowhere. So in other words, the pastor asked him a question, and the servant of God lied to the pastor. <laughs> if I had a penny for every person that lied to me, I could retire. Sometimes people lie more to pastors because they think they're naive or gullible. But if they're really called by God, it's actually the opposite. They have discernment and the Holy Ghost. So he said, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went nowhither. In other words, I went nowhere. And he said unto him, Went not mine heart with thee? When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is it a time to receive money and receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servant and maid servants? The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from the presence a leper as white as snow. Now someone didn't understand what I'm saying. I'm simply sharing that this servant of the man of God should have been staying with Elijah. And when he went out of his jurisdiction, he got tempted to be greedy. And because of his greed and not being content, the Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. Because he was not content and he was greedy, he was tempted. <coughs> How many of you know when we leave our jurisdiction, we get tempted in ways we never should have been? Amen. Men cheat on their wives. Men cheat on women all the time because they're out of place. King David was supposed to be in the front line of the battle. But because he was out of place, he was tempted and got caught up with Bathsheba. He saw something that God did not intend for him to see. And if he would have stayed in the battle, he would have avoided that whole thing altogether. If Gehazi would have stayed with Elijah, he would have avoided that whole thing altogether. And because of it, he got a little financial gain, but it costed him his health. Yes. Can I tell you? Can't... Old Brooklyn Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to release 
the oppressed, old Brooklyn Christian Church.